Lord you're mighty. 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 Lord Lord, you're mine. 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 Lord, you're mine.
those things, especially as we get older. You start saying, Lord, with all the generational stuff in my family, and it skipped over me. Woo! Millions didn't make it. But I'm one of the ones through COVID, through a pandemic, and you saw fit. I was some of the same places some of the other folks were. But Lord, you saw fit. So just lift up holy hands. Lift up holy hands and say, Lord, you did it again. You are the living word. You are the living word. You got to let the word come alive. You a healer. You a way maker. You a company keeper. When I lost my mother, you were there. When I lost my father, you were there. Just slip those hands up. I can't tell you what to tell him. But if you know him, you know what to say. Thank you, Lord. Bread of life, sin down from glory. Many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living word, say. Bread of heaven, sin down from glory. Sin down from glory. Many things, many things you were on earth, a holy king of carpenter. You are the living bread word, of heaven, bread of heaven, sent down from glory, sent down from glory. Many things, many things you were on earth, a holy. God with us, God with us, the living truth, and, and what a friend we have in you. You are the living word, awesome ruler, gentle redeemer. God with us, God with us. We call you. That's yeah. what we call you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But on a tree, you died to save you, man. That's it. You are the living word. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. Oh, that's what we call you. That's what we call you. Let your barber on a tree. 
give God a praise in this place and just begin to say you are the living word is there anybody in here glad that God is the living word come on how many of you came for a word today but not just any kind of word but you need a living word the Bible says that they, that they was healed by the word they was clean through the word come on you ought to just say you are the living word you are the living come on I like that you are the living word Woo! you are the living word yeah 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 come on what do you have point at your neighbor and say he is the living word yeah it is in him that we live move and have our being come on you ought to thank God for the living word the word that we receive it brings life it brings liberty 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Yes, welcome to the Greater True Vine Church, located in the heart of DeSoto. We thank God for those that are watching online. We thank God for those that are in the sanctuary. Come on, come on, come on. Let's give God a great praise in here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Now, listen, this is what we're going to do. Uh, I need to do a praise check. Uh, I want you to look down your row and just ask them, is this a death row or is this a lively row? Go ahead. Cause, cause tell them if it's death row, I, need to may, I may need to move my seat because anything dead needs to be buried. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, let's give a great God bless you to our GTV Music Ministry praise team. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. Listen very quickly. You know, it is praying time. And um, we want to pray for those. Uh, we prayed earlier during our intercessory prayer time. But uh, there's so many people that are in need of prayer right now. And we're praying for the Thompson family, the Rylander family. Uh, the Honda family and um, the Williams family and so many others, so many Taylors. If you're watching online, just drop your name on the comment and our intercessors will be praying for you. We believe in targeting. Yeah, you got to hit your target when you pray. You just can't just, just can't just pray one of those general prayers. God bless everybody. No, call my name. Uh, somebody ought to say, call my name. I need... I need my name called out in prayer. Amen. Amen. Listen, it is giving time. Come on. I said it's giving time. Yeah. We get excited when we give because it is a blessing to give. Amen. If God has blessed you to get some income, it is a blessing to give. Come on, somebody. There's somebody wish they could give and cannot. But if you've been blessed to give, if God, the Bible says in Deuteronomy, it is he that gives you the power to get wealth. Yeah, what do that mean, pastor? That means that if God don't touch your body to get up and get those legs to moving so you can go to work. Come on, somebody. Yeah, so we, we uh, want to honor God with our tithes and our offering. What is tithe? The 10% of your income and so listen there are many ways to give it's on the screen and and so let's go ahead and give because you can't be god given all right come on tell somebody you can't be god given oh no you can't you can't be them givens and so we're we are givers yeah giving is what we do at greater true vine yeah i ought to have some witnesses in here that can say hey i gave my way out of debt i gave my way into blessings okay amen listen we are excited here because one of the ones we, like i said our mantra is giving is what we do we believe in matthew 25 alive and i'm excited because this year we're giving away scholarships again amen and so this year on april 23rd we will have our annual ad rylander scholarship luncheon and we're so blessed to have the desoto mayor our city our city mayor, DeSoto Mayor, uh, Rachel Proctor, amen, and she's also an ordained minister, and so we got a believer that's uh, running our city, and so we thank God, and so it's something about when the leaders that knows the power of prayer, and so we're connecting with her, amen, as we pray for those that are in leadership, our police officers our government officials amen and the bible tells us to pray and we're so glad to have our very own janiah butler who is the recipient of the 2022 ad rylander scholarship and so um it's april 23rd get your tickets get your tickets you can go to truevineresource.com and reserve your seating we we want you to reserve your seating so we know uh, how much food to prepare. It's going to be here, amen, at the Greater True Vine Church. And so get your ticket, all right? All right, well, let's get ready for this living word. 
All right. Is that all right, everybody? All right. First Kings. First Kings chapter 17. 22nd verse. First Kings 17. Do you know what I mean? Somebody ought to say, my pastor was a frustrated rapper. <laughs> 1 Kings 17, message version says, God listened to Elijah's prayer and put breath back into his body. He was alive. Let me say that again. God listened to Elijah's prayer and put breath back into that little boy's body. He was alive. Elijah picked the boy up carried him downstairs from the loft and gave him to his mother. Here's your son, said Elijah, alive. If you're not too mean, would you just point at five people and tell them prayer brought me back. Go ahead. Prayer brought me back. Prayer brought me back. Yeah, yeah. Anybody, anybody's a witness that prayer brought me back? At the beginning, of 1 Kings chapter 17, there's this whole idea of God speaks to Elijah and said, even though there's a drought, I'm going to provide for you. Even though there's a recession, I will take care of you. There's no water. There's no food. God tells the prophet, I know there's no water, but go down to the brook, and there will be water at the brook. But what if a brother get hungry? Don't worry about food, because I'm going to have a bird feed you, a raven. I, I commanded a raven, a bird to send you something to eat three times a day. So the water from the brook will satisfy the thirst. And the raven will make sure you get food. And the Bible says, and a bird brought him food. Are y'all ready for y'all first shout today? You don't have to brown nose your balls and you don't have to sleep no to with nobody to pay your rent. And young brothers, you don't have to kill your own people to make a dime. No, because if God is on your side, people can drop you and people that don't raise you, you ought to look at somebody and tell them, God got a bird. Go ahead. Oh, that's the wrong person. Find you somebody because God will take care of you if your job don't want you, if your spouse divorce you, if your family drop you, if your family betray you, God will make a way out of no way. I wish I had somebody here that know that God got a bird. Come on. And don't you act like you don't remember some of the birds in your life. In many cases, let's not play any games. It was your mama. Yeah, you took a few wrong steps and had to go back and live with mama. Well, at least God gave you a bird. Come on. Some of you had to stay with one of your cousins for a minute because stuff just didn't click. At least God gave you a bird bird God always will have somebody to help you in your time and I don't even care if you're on food stamps God gave you a bird uh, I know some of you I ain't talking about the car y'all y'all know I'm talking about the old school food stamp y'all ain't saying nothing in here uh, I don't care what you say most of us in here came from nothing and now we're sitting in here educated with two and three degrees a car a nice house God God has been good to you and to us as a people because some of us, do I have any witnesses in here? Some of us can remember that we didn't have nothing but God always had a purr. <laughs> the Bible says, and after uh, he was there a certain amount of time, 
the brook dried up. Somebody ought to holler, the brook dried up. Now, what do you mean, pastor, that the brook dried up? Because the Bible said that he's drinking from the water and the bird feeds him. And all of a sudden, the bird don't show up no more. And then all of a sudden, the brook dried up. But thank God for dried up brooks. Go ahead. Because if, if had the brook never dried up, you would have never left. If God did not dry up that relationship, you'd be stuck with another child. If God didn't let you catch a cheat, you'd be stuck with a woman you shouldn't be with. If God didn't shut that door, you know what? I'm sorry. Do me a favor. Take 10 seconds and praise God for every closed door in your life. Oh. I know you want to praise him for the open door, but every now and then, you got to praise God for the closed door. Because it was those doors that closed that opened you up for new possibilities. It, it, was, those, it was those closed doors that help you arrive to your ultimate potential. It was those doors closed. Let me tell y'all something. There's a blessing behind closed doors. Ooh, I'm so glad that my job let me go. I'm serious. I didn't understand it then. Had not Verizon let me go, I wouldn't have been on the radio. I wouldn't be able to make great people. I wouldn't even been able to meet all of you and been all over the country and preach before people became an author. If God did dry up that brook I could have never stepped into my ocean oh y'all just missed that you better thank God for drying up brooks yeah God done took you from a brook to an ocean and you ain't seen nothing yet I feel a shot already Beck because I believe in 2022 God is about to swing some doors open that would have never swung open but God had to first Dry up the brook. <laughs> There's a book, watch this, called Necessary Endings by Henry Cloud. Yeah, there's some seasons in your life that had to end. They, they were necessary. They were painful, but they were necessary necessary endings had, had they not ended you could have never walked into your fantastic beginnings oh something had to end some something had to close so god shuts that chapter and said to elijah elijah if i keep this bird feeding you and if I keep this brook sustaining you, you'll stay right here. So in order to shift you to your next prophetic place, I got to dry this up. He then says, I've commanded a widow to feed you there. He said, Elijah, the same way I commanded a bird, there's a single mama, husband just died. She got a baby boy, it's just her and her baby. I'm trying to do something in her life and you're the necessary participant. So go to Zarephath and, and the same way I commanded a bird to feed you, I've instructed one version says, another version says, I commanded a widow to feed you. And as we look to the circumference of our text in verse 13, Elijah says to her, look at it, don't be afraid. Just go do what you do. Just go ahead. Just go and do what you said. Watch what he said. But make me a little bit first. He gets there and he says, hey, sister girl, I'm Reverend Elijah from the Greater True Vine Church. And uh, I just want to know, can a brother get something to drink? And then he going to say, and bring me something to eat too. She couldn't have been completely African-American. Because she would have snapped her fingers 
and said, what's your name, Reverend who? Because I ain't got time to play with you. My husband dead. My, I'm by myself. Just me and my baby. I'm hungry. And you tripping. And the Bible says, and that's where the text picks up today. He said, that's okay, baby. I know you ain't got but a little, but bring me something first. Bring me something first. Bring me something first, baby girl. Because truth be told, you dead already. Based on your melancholy mindset, this is technically your last supper. So you might as well let me bless you and bring me something first. Now all of you think that he's there for some food. But you have a narrow view to this text. And whatever else I came to do today is to broaden your mind because God wants you to be bigger than you've been acting. You know what? In 2022, I want God to give you at least one new friend, somebody smarter than you, someone who can push you into a new place. I want God to dry up somebody that you need to delete from your destiny and replace it with somebody who can help you see something bigger you got to come to a church that pushes you. I don't just need to know that I'm going to heaven, but I need my pastor to help me to live here on earth. Push me. And Elijah says, well, you, you think, girl, you broke, huh? You broke. Y'all about to die. You don't just need no money. You need a change of mind. And there is some issue to be taken up with this woman because my issue with her is she going to tell the prophet. She said, me and my son is going to eat this last little biscuit and we going to die. Now I'm upset with her mother. I'm upset with her about her mindset. But I'm even more upset because she's involving her baby. Because the little boy didn't even ask to be here. So what you said is because you done lost something that you love. And because life hasn't went your way. You done now took on this posture that you going to die. And now everything that's connected to you is going to die too. But the devil is a lie. Girl, I ain't here to get no money. I'm here to change your mind. I'm here to push your faith. I don't know who the Lord sent me to preach to today. But that everything that can go wrong is going wrong with you right now. And the devil wants you to think that you ain't going to make it. But baby, if you not going to live for you and at least live for your kids. I wish I had somebody. I'm sorry. If your kids are grown, then you need to shout for them too. Why? Because God says, devil, whatever you have planned that's messed is not going to mess up my posterity. It ain't going to mess up my granddaughter. It ain't going to mess up my son. It ain't going to mess up my daughter. The devil is a lie. I'm sorry. Push you people and say, I got to get myself together. Oh, I got to get myself together because the devil is trying to wipe out my whole family. He's trying to wipe out my children, my grandchildren. Devil's trying to wipe out my husband. Is there anybody in here who's catching hell from every direction? That's a good sign for you to stand up and fight for your life and say, I can't die like this. The devil is a lie. You want to have five, two people and say, not right now, not right now. I can't die right now. Now, I feel God in there. Oh, I feel God. I just felt God on that because everybody here whose children is being attacked by the enemy on any level right now. It's time for you to say, I got to fight. I can't give up because they daddy left. I can't give up because my husband don't want me. I can't give up because my mama didn't raise me. I can't give up because my friends betrayed me. I got to fight for my life. This woman 
In fact, somebody ought to just get up and just say, I got to fight. I got to This woman is at best, Sister Lockwood, this woman's mindset is best is melancholy. She, she has a, Sister Effie, a mental stronghold. Yeah, yeah. And you do know that a stronghold is a mindset impregnated with hopelessness. A, a stronghold is when the devil holds your mind strong. I keep telling you to be my friend. You don't have to have nothing, but you do have to want something. Because I can't have people around me who don't want nothing because that stuff would jump on me. And some people will get mad at you when you don't want to jump in the hole with them. I told y'all 10 times, if you are in a six foot hole, if I jump in too, we both could stuck. You don't need nobody to jump in. You need somebody to reach down and say, come on out. So you're telling people, you don't understand. You don't know what I'm going to. No, I do understand. I'm just not coming down there with you. You got to get yourself together because I'm not going to sit on this phone and feel sorry for you for the next 25 years. It happened. Let it go. Get up and grab hold of Jesus. Come out of this. I'm sorry. Do me a favor. Just fight your way out of this right look at your neighbor and say you gotta fight for your life who am I preaching to on Facebook who am I preaching to all over this world in your living room Elijah said watch what he said he said baby this is gonna sound crazy this is not big pimping I know you're a single woman I know you just have you and your son, limited resources, but I'm going to ask you something, and please don't flunk the test. Don't have a narrow mindset because I'm about to ask you something that's not going to make no sense financially. Give me some first. Now, if your mind is small, see, that's why people say, See, that's why I, I, I don't even go to church because them preachers, they be big pimping and because and, and the girl ain't got no money. She ain't got no money. She's trying to raise her baby, her husband dead, and you're going to go in there and you're going to emotionalize her, that girl, and you're going to say, give me some fur. You know they ain't got nothing. Why you say, what, what man of God is going to do that? That's small thinking. Are y'all paying attention? Let's try it again. Because did I just tell y'all earlier a bird was feeding this brother? Did I just tell y'all that God gave the man his own brook to drink from? Stop thinking that the church needs you. I'm sorry, push two people and say, please get over yourself. It done got quiet. Don't you ever say again, well, greater true vine ought to be glad I go here. No, be glad we let you come here. Be glad that God woke you up this morning. Be glad that God gave you breath in your body. You're not doing God no favor by being here. God did you a favor by waking you up this morning, clothed in your right mind. You get to come to church. You get to serve. You get to give an offering. You get to praise the Lord. Somebody wish they had something to give. Somebody wish they could stand here and wish they had and legs to stand up if you got strength in your legs and if you are in your right mind and God let you drive here or walk here or Uber here then you better praise him you better praise him well well 
They ought to be glad. They ought to be glad I put anything in. Really? Really? You ought to be glad that we let you put something in. Be glad that God let you go to work. Be glad that your pituitary glands inside your brain worked enough for you to know your left hand from your right hand. If you got a piece of job, God didn't even have to let your legs get out of the bed. You may not have the job you want, but thank God that you got anything. God been better to me than I've been to myself, and I came here this morning not to complain, but to throw my head back and say, thank you. Okay, as I hurry along, verse 15 says, watch what verse 15, so she did just as Elijah said, and she and her son and Elijah, y'all gonna miss a good shout. What'd you say, Missionary Candace, earlier, y'all, y'all slow, but you're worth waiting on. Because Elijah, it says, she and Elijah and her sons. Okay, y'all missed it. When she gave that little piece of biscuit, I don't know what happened. See, right there, I could say, Bibles, I could say something deep like the bread came out of bread. and uh, the, You know, I don't know what happened. The Bible don't tell me. You know, all I know is that she continued to eat for many days, which means it would be Isis Jesus to say how they ate. I don't know how they ate. Maybe after she gave that prophet a little piece of biscuit, maybe somebody knocked on the door and said, girl, Holy Spirit told me to bring you some groceries over here. Don't know maybe her mama called and say sugar you've been on my mind you know what we gonna go we gonna come over there and gonna bring you something to eat but don't God provide in some strange ways come on have you ever been down to your last and somebody just called you and said you know what I was thinking about you and God told me to give you this gift card go to Walmart get you something to eat won't God do it? Look at your neighbor and say, won't God do it? God will make a way out of no way. I don't know how they ate. I'm not going to say something deep that's not in the Bible. The Bible don't tell me how she got sustained. All the Bible tells me, and y'all miss it again, she, Elijah, and her son. Continually. <laughs> That's all I know. That after she gave her last, she, Elijah, and her son, after testifying, I ain't got nothing. But this one look, she, Elijah, and her son. So now God done gave her enough for her, her baby, and the prophet. Ooh, God. Elijah in the text, in this narrative, watch this. You should know this, represents the kingdom. He represents the church. He represents God. The widow woman represents you. Elijah represents God. He represents the kingdom. He represents the church. God is saying something is about to jump off in her life that she don't know about. So I want to make an exchange with her before the stuff jump off. Now, she don't know what I got her doing now is setting her up for something that she can't see because see I know her ending from her beginning but I hope I hope she don't flunk the biscuit test. 
I, I'm trying to do something for her life. I'm setting her up for something she can't see right now. But I hope she don't fail the biscuit test. Because you'd be surprised how many of you got pregnant over a biscuit. You'd be surprised who slept with a biscuit. Just wouldn't give up a biscuit. Bowl of beans. One person gave up their birthright. Yeah, just small. Because if you would have looked back, watch this. If you would have looked back and had sold, S-O-W-E-D, if you would have sold that life, sold that time, sold that abstinence, I, 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 just wanna give, I just want you to give me a little piece. And you flunk the test. You flunk the biscuit test when God wanted to give you something more. Mm. And Elijah thinking, watch this, I don't even know why God got me here. But baby, all I know is God told me to tell you, bring me something first. And the Bible said, later on, the woman's son became sick. The sickness, watch this, took a turn for the worse, and then he stopped breathing. And then he stops breathing, breathing. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who knew this part was coming? Because the Bible says, I want you to hear me. The Bible said everything is cool. Everything was cool. Watch this. The biscuit, she sold it, she trusted Food came, she continued to eat. Somebody called, we don't know. All we know is that they didn't run out of food. Everything was going good. Everything is fine. Elijah is now staying with her because culturally people will have little rooms on the side of their ceiling on the roof for a special guest to stay, especially the man of God. So she said, I'm so kingdom minded now. Prophet, you can stay here. And so she's feeding the prophet. She's feeding her baby. She's feeding herself. She got more food than she ever had. Life is good. And then life happens. Life happens. I feel like preaching to 10 people in here. What happens when life happens? All of a sudden, you can be doing good. And life just happened on you. You know, I better stay connected to my church because you can be getting along with your spouse. Girl, I got the best marriage in this church. And just check your phone and just see one text that changes everything you thought was real. What, girl? Girl, Mother Williams, my kids are not wild. Then you get a call from one of them. Mama, I'm pregnant. Well, 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 my children, well, know how to act. Mama got caught up. I may be doing some time. Life can just happen. Everything can be going good and boom, somebody's sick. And all of a sudden, how do you explain that? How, how can you theolo theologize that? I feel like preaching in my own church because is there anybody in here that is listening to me right now? How can you explain it? The Bible says all of a sudden it's on the screen. He couldn't breathe. He stopped breathing. He stopped breathing. And you know, <laughs> he stopped breathing. You know we cannot forget the day that would go down in black history when Eric Gardner said 11 times in a row, I 
can't breathe. And George Floyd, the devil is trying, let me tell you something, the devil is trying to choke the life out of our children. The enemy is after our baby. The enemy is trying to snatch the breath. And I declare that the enemy cannot have the young people of GTV. He's trying to choke the life, but Jesus is going to keep his hands on them. I got to go. But I, I had to speak on that topic because verse 18 says, she says to the preacher, watch what she says to the preacher. She says to the prophet, what do you have against me, man of God? Did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? Now, did I just tell y'all that Elijah been staying with her? They been eating. Things are fine. Things are going good. And now her baby dies. She says something crazy now. Because you know what? Because hurt people hurt people. She says something crazy. What do you have against me, man? The God, did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? Hurt people hurt people. You hear me? And when my heart is broke, my head don't work. We teach that in grief recovery, which is why if I just came out of a marriage, I don't need nobody else but a minimum of two years. I may be exaggerating a little bit, but not much, because I got to get them soul ties out of me. And I just came out of something. I'm not ready to go back into something. Okay. This woman's pain, listen to this woman's pain. The woman is in pain, and here's what she says. So, Mr. Preacher, all this, give me something to eat, bring me a little piece of biscuit. You saying all this, you all up in my house, and you really came here to kill my baby, huh? You really came here. You, you came here. You came here. To remind me of my sins and to kill my baby. Look what she is doing. She's taking responsibility for her child's death and placing it on her, which is unhealthy. Yeah. There's some of you that God sent to this church, and I may not get a lot of shouts right here, but if three people get whole, it was a decent message from me. Some of you got to stop you got to stop accepting responsibility for everything that is happening to the people that you love how did they cheat on you and you at home feeling guilty he left you and those babies and you at home feeling guilty and now he's over his new woman's house and you talking about if I would have just been a little bit more affectionate, girl, please. He should have divorced you first and then dated somebody else. But to bust a move on you was still his fault. And everything that your kids are doing, you can't personalize that. You can't, oh, I know I wasn't going to get no shouts. That's all right. I'm helping somebody. You can't say, you know what, I wish I didn't have them so early. And if they daddy, if they had a daddy and he, he, they daddy's in jail. No, 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 no. Because, listen, some crackhead crazy parents got children that are changing the world. And there are some preachers and there's some first ladies who raise those kids in church and they don't even go to church. Everybody got to take responsibility of their own lives and don't you drive yourself crazy of what other people choose to do because you will age get sick and die prematurely your son is not in prison because she was a bad mother your son is in prison because he chose to rob somebody Your son is in prison because he decided to drive that dope down there. He's not in prison because you wasn't a good mother. There's a person whose mother never went to church and they sitting in church right now. There's kids whose parents are drunk 
every Saturday and they still come to church saying God bless my mama but God is not my mama it's not my father but it's me that's standing in the need of prayer it's me and every tongue is going to have to stand on their own bottom and if you don't hear nothing else today in 2022 let people do them you pray for them that's all you can do you know what? I don't know what kind of sermon this is. Lord, help me. I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I'm helping somebody. But stop personalizing everybody's problem because they had a choice. No grown person can make you do nothing. You have to choose. Even young people, I want the young people to listen to me. I don't know who raised you, who didn't raise you, who left you, what you didn't have to start with, but your life is on you and Jesus. Your life is up to you and Jesus. Don't be blaming Trump. Don't be blaming Joe Biden or the Democrats or the Republicans or your father or the, or the other father who said he would be your father or the church and then you get mad. You want to blame pastor. Now it's me. I don't know how I got in the mess. Now you mad. I don't even know how I got in it. Whew. I ain't got nothing to do with your life. You got to decide in Jesus' name that if God be for me, who can be against me? It's my time. I got three minutes, and y'all ain't going to believe this. Because look at what Elijah says. Then he prayed, oh, God, why you brought this terrible thing on this woman because of me? Elijah in church. And he confused too. I'm preaching better than y'all responding. See, it's one thing to be a ghetto mama to go off and cuss. But now look at the preacher. God, why you bring me here? See, don't take my humanity out of my Christianity. Because sometimes I come to church, I got a confused praise. I don't even know what's happening in my life. But Lord, I thank you. Elijah, are y'all ready? Somebody going to shout. Here's my last point. What's the difference between a Christian and a Christian? Well, the Bible says, watch this. She cussed and fussed at Elijah. But what did the preacher and the Christian do? Then he prayed. Y'all just missed that. Y'all don't know how good this is, is. Because watch this. Both of them are confused. But one is blaming other people. And one took it to Jesus. Can I tell you the difference between me and my cousin? We both are a trip. But I know how to go to the Lord in prayer. And say bread of heaven. Oh there's power in prayer. I'm just as confused as you. But I know a man. And he's from Galilee. And if you are in sin. He'll set you free. Would you take about 10 seconds and thank God that on your worst day you know how to go down on your knees and call on the name that's above every name try not to shout try not to shout but I got one more verse and then let's go home God listen to Elijah prayer and put breath back into his body y'all see that he was alive Elijah picked the boy up carried him downstairs gave him to his mama and said here is your son He's alive. I got to go, y'all. But if you're not too mean, I want you to just jump on your feet. And I want you to add her three people and say, prayer brought me back. Come on and add her somebody and tell them prayer brought me back. Say, I should have lost my mind. 
but I called on the name of Jesus. Point at your neighbor and say, neighbor, why did you come to church today? Now look back at him and say, prayer brought me back. Is there anybody in here that should have been dead, sleeping in your grave? And this morning, when you got out of the bed, you said, Lord, thank you for another day. You pulled up on the parking lot. You walked in here. But tell somebody, tell them when I wanted to give up. Prayer brought me back. If the Lord has been good to you, then let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Is there anybody on a Sunday afternoon that could say if it had not been for the Lord, if it had not been for prayer, somebody prayed for me had me on their mind took a little time and prayed for me when I wanted to give up when I wanted to quit brought me back when I was in the hospital laying in my sick bed brought me back do me a favor Point at five people and say, Prayer brought me back. Yes, I feel God. Is there anybody here that believe in the power of prayer? Listen. If you're, in, if you're in here today and you know that prayer can bring you back, if you confuse, I want to let you know that prayer can bring you back. Somebody lift up those hands and say, prayer brought me back. Come on, hands lifted up everywhere. Prayer brought me back. Watch this, I'm, I'm done. The, the Bible says... The scripture said, Elijah, when the boy died, Elijah laid on top of him. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? The Bible said, Elijah laid on top of him. And the scripture says, three times, one for the father, one for the son, one for the Holy Ghost. And he said, he breathed into his mouth. Put his hands into his hands. Put his legs on his legs. Breathe into his mouth. And, and some of y'all just missed what I just said. Let me try it again. The little boy is on the ground. Elijah got on top of him. His hand is on his hand. His legs is on his legs. His mouth on his mouth. Some of y'all miss y'all shout, so I'll say it for you. Point at two people and say, he covered me. Prayer covers. Is there anybody in here know that God covered you? Is there anybody in here that know that mama covered you when you weren't even thinking about living right? Grandmama covered you. Is there anybody that God covered you when you should have lost it all? Should be dead right now. You should be messed up right now. But prayer brought you back. Point at somebody and say, prayer brought me back. Come on, tell them prayer brought me back. How many of you know that prayer brought me? Come on, come on. You ought to say prayer brought me back. Listen, I'm not playing. I'm serious. There's power in prayer. I believe in prayer. Prayer can bring you back. Come on, you just need to come to this altar. Let me pray for you right now. Right now, I'm not going to waste a lot of time. We're going to have communion, but...
Come on, if you know that prayer brought you back, you need to come to this altar. Let me pray for you. Because prayer is about to bring you back. So whatever you might have walked in here with, come on, start running fast as you can to this altar. Because I believe in the power of prayer. Come on, I want you to do me a favor because I feel God is about to break out in this place. I feel God and the devil don't want you to be delivered. Power in prayer. For about a minute and 30 seconds right now, I want everybody in the Holy Ghost to open up your mouth and begin to pray right now. Come on, everybody right now. Come on, open up your mouth right now. Come on, I need everybody praying as souls are coming to the altar. Come on, there's still room at the altar. You need to get here as fast as you can. I need everybody to start praying in the Holy Ghost. Come on, open up your mouth right now. I need every believer. I speak deliverance. I speak healing over every man, every woman. Come on, Lord, you told me to ask what I want. And I cover these people in prayer right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, I need prayer. Come on, open up your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus. Come on, lift those hands. Put you on this altar, lift those hands. Come on. You, as you're at the altar, begin to pray. Come on, begin to pray. Begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I speak deliverance right now. I speak breakthrough right now. In the name of Jesus. I speak over your life right now. God, cover them right now. God, we cover them in prayer right now. I speak healing right now. I speak protection right now. God, I don't know what the enemy have set up for them right now. But God, in the name of Jesus, I speak over this young man's life right now. No weapon formed against him shall be able to prosper. God, put a hedge of protection around him right now. In the name of Jesus, the enemy is trying to steal his breath. But God, we pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Prayer brought you back. Prayer is going to bring your healing back. In the name of Jesus, I pray from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet that God will heal your body. Woo! He's manifesting healing on you right now. God, I cover this young lady, this daughter in prayer right now. Satan, you can't have her. She belongs to God. Her body belongs to God. I come against every predator. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Protect her in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right now, God, do it, Lord. Do it for in the name of Jesus. Do it, God, in the name of Jesus. God, do a turnaround in her life. Emma, yes, Lord. Emma, by Shandidi, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. Just begin to tell them thank you. Come on. Just begin to tell them thank you. Just tell them thank you. Just tell them thank you. Come on, God kept you. Come on, right now, in the name of Jesus. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
lift those hands and just begin to say yes, Lord. As they are singing, as they're singing, this is what I want you to do. This is not a game for me because I know what prayer can do. I want every parent or every spouse, every aunt, every uncle. My heart right now is going towards these young people, this generation. I need you right now. If you believe that prayer can bring them back, if they're out there doing what they should not be doing, I want you to lay, I want you to come to this altar right now and just call their name out. I believe prayer will bring them back. Every backslider, I believe prayer will bring them back. If you got a nephew, you got a niece, I don't care who it is, I just believe this altar right now. Come on, come on. Just begin to call their name right there. Call a name, call a name, come on. Come on, call a name, I believe it. Come on, call him, call him. Lord, when I pray, come on. Give me what that's it, that's you it. Say. Come on, call their name, call their name. Lord, when I pray, come on. Give me what Pride you brought me say. back. to the man of God every one of you that have came and, and shouted their name whoever it was that you shouted that name when you see them come back when God bring them out I want you to tell them prayer brought you back oh! when they come and say you know what I don't know what happened to me. I didn't. I just don't feel like doing it no more. I want to come back home. I want to get back in church. I want you to tell them, prayer brought you back. Woo! And I just believe that those names that you called it, not too many days, they coming back. They coming back. They're coming back. Woo! Lift those hands. Father, we thank you today. For your word, we thank you for the moving by your spirit. God, I thank you for these souls that are at this altar. Those intercessors that are standing in the gap for their loved one, their child, their niece, their nephew, brother, sister, whoever they are. God, I thank you, Lord, that whoo, we can come boldly to the throne of grace and ask for mercy in a time of need. God, I pray that every person that's this altar, God, will leave this altar encouraged. Will leave this altar with most strength. In the name of Jesus. God, I thank you. I thank you for what you get ready to do for that loved one. Turn them around. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Now, before you go back to your seat, come on, I want you to air hug somebody close to you. Tell them, pray, brought me back. Come on.
we're getting ready to receive communion. If you have your sacraments, if you can go ahead and prepare them right now. Those of you that are watching at home, give you some time to go to that kitchen, get you some grape juice and some crackers so we can take communion together. Everyone standing. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And that night when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was the night before he was betrayed, he Set with his disciples and he took the bread which I now do and he ministered his name he said this bread represents my body which will be broken for you and he said take it in that same manner he lifted up the cup and he lifted up toward his disciples and he told his disciples in this cup is my blood because without the shedding of blood there will be no remission of sins he said this will be the new covenant and he said drink all of it let us pray father we thank you God for this sweet communion God I pray right now for every person that have took the bread and drunk of the cup Lord I pray today that it will provide spiritual nourishment and I pray for physical and spiritual healing in the name of Jesus God we thank you for the blood for the blood will never lose its power. Thank you for the shed blood that bled for us. Thank you, Lord. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, put those hands together. Watching online, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget this Wednesday night for Bible study, Life in the Vine Bible study at 7 p.m. virtually. Also, if you haven't had a chance to give, you can give right now. Many ways to give. If you need prayer or you want to connect with this ministry, call us, email us, somebody will get in touch with you within 24 hours. And remember this, why settle for good when greater is available? Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for all of you that have came today.